Hello and welcome to All for Animals podcast. I'm your host, Rachel. And today's episode is all about Pet Dental Health Awareness Month. Did you know that February is Pet Dental Health Awareness Month? Now you do. (laughs) So I figured that now would be a great time to talk about dental health. Seems fitting, little on the nose, you know. So most people tend to assume that pets and especially dogs are just like supposed to have really bad breath. Thus, why the term dog breath is so ubiquitous. So what if I told you, though, that your dogs or cats or even ferrets and hedgehogs and any other kind of critter that has teeth, uh, that their bad breath can actually be... That can be the first sign of early dental disease and not just the norm and how it's supposed to be. More than 70% of pets show some form of periodontal disease by the age of three. And periodontal disease, pretty self-explanatory, but it's the inflammation of the gums, it's the collection of tartar, it's that buildup of the really bad bacteria that can cause all kinds of problems for your dog's mouth as well as other body systems. So if more than 70% of those pets are showing that periodontal disease by just the age of three That means that pets are, like the vast majority of pets, are living with constant dental issues for most of their lives. That's, it's really, really sad. Especially because I feel like anybody that's ever had like a toothache, a root canal, even, hell, just a cavity pulled, or your wisdom teeth, or a cavity drilled, sorry, or your wisdom teeth pulled, Tooth pain, it's a big deal. It really hurts. And I see pets on literally a daily basis who are just so, so young. We're talking five and under. And their poor teeth look worse than my almost 14-year-old dog magics. Big deal. It's, It's such a neglected area of pet care that I I feel like most owners don't even really give it a second thought, but it really needs more awareness. So that's what we're doing here today. So what are some of the problems that uh, these dogs, or I'm sorry, not just dogs, um, that these pets might be experiencing, you might ask? Uh, That can be anything from loose and wiggly teeth, to extreme like sensitivity, pain when they're trying to eat, abscesses, which can unfortunately also travel up into the sinuses and even damage uh, the eyes as well. And then also things like infection, which can spread through the bloodstream and actually cause systemic organ failure. Dental health is so, so, so much more than just a favor to your nose. It's, it's an integral part of your pet's health care. I'll make sure to um, post some of the pictures of the various scary dental issues I've spotted from my grooming dogs as well. And uh, post the ages of the dogs as well so that you guys can get a little bit of a better idea what we're talking about. And Hopefully that'll also help everyone to more easily be able to tell if uh, your pet's teeth might need some TLC. So now that I've freaked everyone out about the dire consequences, (laughs) let's talk about what exactly periodontal disease is and how to best recognize it. Periodontal disease is essentially an infection and or irritation of the gums and even the bone that holds uh, the the teeth in place. It can happen in any animal with gums and teeth. So that also includes us humans. And over time, it can cause all of the problems that I, I mentioned 
earlier, and then some. It's pretty easy to recognize with a, a very simple check of your pet's mouth. If you just kind of gently pull your pet's lips up, you'll notice usually some discoloration of the teeth, uh, quite often like a yellow or even brown color, as well as the gums, which are usually pretty red, irritated, kind of streaky even, and they might bleed. And you may even notice some wiggly teeth. I get so many clients that ask me to brush their dog's teeth because there's all that hard brown gunk along the the gum line. And unfortunately, I have to tell them that the brown gunk is actually called tartar. And brushing, it it's never going to be able to get that off. You see, tartar is plaque. So like the white gunk that we floss out from in between our teeth. Uh, so it's plaque that sat on your pet's teeth for so long that the like enzymes in their saliva actually calcified it. Meaning it's, it's hard as a rock. It's attached to that tooth. So at that point, your pet is going to need a dental surgery to remove the tartar. So that no more that no more of it can build up on the teeth, and uh, during a dental surgery, your pet is going to be anesthetized. They'll have X-rays to check for issues like hidden in the gums and jaw, and the vet will use a special ultrasonic tool that loosens up that tartar and cleans up the teeth, and then follow that up with the, uh, it's like a little polishing tool to polish the surface of the teeth and prevent any bacteria, plaque, and tartar from taking up residence in any teeny tiny little scratches that may have, you know, developed on the teeth from the cleaning itself and just from everyday life. And uh, they'll also inspect for any like pockets of infection that might be hiding along that, that gum line and underneath it. Having this dental essentially gives your pet a clean slate, and that gives you, their owner, the perfect opportunity to implement preventative care, such as regular brushing. And I feel like I just heard a collective groan from everybody, but hear me out, okay? Most vets recommend brushing your pet's teeth at least a couple of times a week. And I know that sounds like a lot. But I actually brush my dog's teeth every every day. I tell my clients, my grooming clients, all the time, if you were only brushing your teeth every time you got a haircut, do you think you'd still have any left? Because I'm not sure you would. Same goes for our fuzzy friends. Without that regular brushing, the food, bacteria, and plaque that's always sticking on your pet's teeth is just going to be left there to build up and rot, which is just a recipe for disaster. And it's actually a lot easier than most people think to build a quick little toothbrushing into your regular routine. It honestly takes me like two minutes a day. And my boys are definitely not, they're not fond of it, but they do cooperate for the most part. They just kind of pout afterwards. And Miyagi does this really funny thing where he feels the need to rub his face all over whatever nearest, uh, like, soft thing, a blanket, a pillow, is nearby and, uh, like, do the fake sneezes and he, he carries on very dramatically like he's trying to get the toothpaste out. It's pretty funny. I might have to post a video. Okay. So I made sure to get them used to having their teeth brushed from a really, really young age, but... You can work on this with literally any pet of any age. You just have to take it in little bitty baby steps. So first, you want to make sure to only, only, only use pet-specific toothpaste. This is extremely important, especially because most human toothpastes, they're going to have things like xylitol, uh, which is now also, PSA here, being labeled as birch sugar. Um, it's very, very toxic. You, you don't want to be giving that to your animal. So keep an eye out. Make sure you're only using animal-appropriate um, toothpaste. 
I prefer to use enzymatic toothpastes and gels because to me, they seem to be more effective at actually like breaking down any of the nasties that are on their teeth. But that's just, that's my preference. So once you have your toothpaste, you also need some form of a toothbrush. At least like for dogs, a toothbrush will usually fit in their mouth. But for some of the smaller critters, uh, you can even use something tiny like like a Q-tip. Doesn't have to be an official toothbrush. Okay, so put just a little dab of whatever toothpaste you're trying to use on your finger. Let your pet sniff it and have a taste. And if they're if they're reluctant to uh, lick up the the toothpaste on their own, you can dab a little bit on their nose. And then that'll pretty much encourage them to try it because they'll also just want to clean off their nose. Um, the, the whole point here is not to just dive into brushing their teeth. You're trying to get them more comfortable with it, familiar with the taste of whatever product you're using, the feel of the, the brush or Q-tip in their mouth in general. You don't want to startle them, <laughs> you know. So you can then, after they're a little more comfy with that. You can then put some of the toothpaste on the actual toothbrush or toothbrush-like product. Um, and again, just let your pet sniff it and taste it. And then you can gently graduate to pulling their lips up and revealing the teeth. And then just brush the teeth as well as you can. The first time you're probably not going to get a pristine job. Don't worry about that. It's okay. Because what you're trying to do here is get them acclimated. You're trying to train a new like routine. So those first few times that you're trying this, it's okay if you don't get all of the teeth. It's okay if it's not for as long as you need it to be. We're working up to it. So you don't just don't rush the process of acclimating them or you might actually, it can be counterproductive. You, you can create more of a struggle for every other, you know, future time that you try to brush your pet's teeth. So not every animal or owner for that matter is going to be as receptive to the actual toothbrush. Uh, believe it or not, that's that's okay. Like I mentioned earlier, you can you can use other things. The point is you want to clean your pet's teeth as well as you can. So um, finger toothbrushes are a great alternative, but even those can sometimes be a little bit too bulky or difficult for your dog to accept. So then there's also things like little um, disposable, they're like wipes. Um, and I've even seen some that are funky little uh, like uh, fingertip gloves that are treated with the dental solution and then you essentially just put that wipe on your finger and gently massage your dogs or cats or whatever critters teeth and and gums instead of brushing so you can try a bunch of different things if one doesn't work try something else you can also talk to your vet and they might have some other solutions that you can try out. But here's the best part. Brushing their teeth regularly can really, really, really help you save so much money in the long run by allowing you to avoid those costly dental surgeries or at the very, very least reduce the number of dentals that your pet might need throughout their life, which is always going to make a huge difference. And like I said earlier, dental issues can be extraordinarily painful. Like some people say it's the worst pain that they can be in. And unfortunately for the humans in their lives, our pets are extremely good at hiding their pain. So I'm going to just point out some signs of an animal in pain. And these are some basic ones. There's obviously going to be some more specific ones for different kinds of animals, but you get my drift here. We're looking for things like excess licking, sudden changes in the animal's behavior, lethargy and restlessness, loss of appetite, even changes in bathroom habits, excess panting, or they might even stop grooming themselves. And getting more specific about tooth pain, 
That can cause things like watering eyes and even facial swelling and nasal discharge, which are things that don't tend to be what what people think of when they're thinking dental pain, which can make it even harder to tell what might be going on with your little critter. So now you have a little bit better understanding. I always like to recommend doing a thorough check of your pet's mouth at least once a week. You want to make sure that if your pet were to have something like a cracked tooth, you would know about it relatively quickly to seek care. And then that also gives you the prime opportunity to check for things like plaque and tartar buildup. It's a lot easier and less painful to prevent dental and gingival diseases than it is to correct it after it's already formed. You know, what's that saying? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound, is worth more than a pound of cure. Same goes here. There are um, some services out there nowadays that will all uh, advertise like anesthesia-free dentals, and they may work for some people. I mean, feel free to talk to your vet, do your own research, but they definitely make me pretty nervous. The The thing is that the, the vast majority of pets that I see, at least as a groomer, have way too much gum irritation for it to be safe to go poking around in their mouths while they're fully conscious and aware of what's going on. Think about the last toothache you had, and now imagine someone poking sharp instruments and doing lots of scrubbing and scraping and not having any kind of anesthetic. But it's it's also kind of worse for an animal because we can't very well explain to them that the pain that they're experiencing is going toward a good cause. They're just going to experience that pain and be scared and you know, they'll they'll flail around, try to escape, things that make it very unsafe for everyone involved. I know a lot of people, especially those with elderly or medically complicated pets, um, they can be afraid of having their pet put anesthesia put under anesthesia. But this is why your veterinarian will also do some tests before starting any any medications for them, or at least why they will probably ask you for authorization to perform those tests. They're going to want to do a blood test for the basic organ functions, things like the liver, the kidneys, the thyroid, and the pancreas, which will tell them if the animal's body is capable of processing the anesthetic drugs safely. And then they'll do things like a blood count, which will check to make sure your pet doesn't have a clotting or bleeding problem, which could be pretty important before um, anything that might involve pulling teeth or draining an abscess. Um, And this test will also likely be able to indicate if there are too many white blood cells, which will mean there's, there's an infection. And then... For the more medically complex pet, say one that has a heart condition, a lung condition, something like that, uh, the vet may also do like a a chest x-ray or even an electrocardiogram. Uh, So just, just because your pet is old or has some health condition, that doesn't mean that you have to assume they can't get a proper dental done. Talk to your vet, see what they recommend, and make a plan for your specific pet veterinary medicine, it's its come a long way. We can keep our pets safe in a myriad more ways than we used to be able to. So I've mentioned a bunch of different products out there that are designed to help uh, pet owners take care of their pet's teeth. There are things like the dental wipes for those who struggle to get a toothbrush in their animal's mouth, finger toothbrushes, and then there's even things like brush-free sprays or gels, which... Uh, and and um, food and water additives, but those are ones that I usually recommend more as a preventative. So if your pet is already having some kind of issue, usually you're going to need some of the heftier things first. Each of these things, they have their benefits and their drawbacks. And if you're feeling overwhelmed by all of those many, many options, you're definitely not alone. So I'm going to give a little, I guess, recommendation because I feel like I've had the best luck personally with the, uh, it's, I think it's called Verbac, C-E-T, 
enzymatic toothpaste um, with my dogs. And I use the vanilla mint flavor for them because uh, I, I think the poultry stuff smells gross and I can't stomach smelling it. And then um, since I'm a groomer, I always have a stash of the little tiny toothbrushes around. And then for like the cats, I just use a little Q-tip as a, you know, little mock toothbrush. And um, there's also a, a fantastic food additive that's called Plaque Off. Um, and this is, it's derived from some kind of sea kelp and it works by softening the plaque and tartar deposits on the teeth over time. It can be a great resource. However, disclaimer here, the um, plaque off product does contain iodine. So definitely consult your vet if your pet has any health conditions or takes any medications um, since not all critters are going to be able to tolerate that iodine. Um, another of my favorite tricks is letting my pet, my, uh, dogs chew on those, um, elk antler segments. And I know that uh, it seems like that's fairly controversial, but it's, it's worked well for me. Um, I get the split ones. So they're mostly just wanting like the, the marrowy stuff on the inside. Um, and it's, it's their favorite chew toy and it helps, it helps to keep their teeth cleaner. Um, I will say they definitely require supervision. Honestly, every toy does. They can splinter or break, so keep an eye on your, your dog while they're chewing on those. And I'm going to make sure and take this moment to remind everyone, rawhide is not recommended for dogs. It is not digestible and can lead to choking and even uh, blockages in the intestines. There are so many other options that are much safer for your pet to chew on. Uh, things like bully sticks. Uh, there's even like specially designed dental toys with um, grooves in them to clean your dog's teeth. Sweet potato chews. Things like tendons and tracheas, which you can find all of these things everywhere. So I'm curious, what is everybody else's dental care routine for your pets? Do you have, do you have any special tips for other pet owners out there? Let me know. Send in, send in your tips, send in your stories. I'm curious too, if anybody else's animals react like Mr. Miyagi does when he gets his teeth brushed, because I always thought that he was really, really weird because my other dogs don't do that. <laughs> So, uh, if you have any of these stories, tips, tricks, um, or any other fun story tip stories, tips, and tricks, feel free to email those to the show at all for animals podcast at gmail.com. And I will make sure to link the, um, toothpaste that I mentioned, the Verbac CET enzymatic toothpaste that I use every day for my dogs. Um, I think it's great. And uh, so I'll make sure to put a link to that in the show notes. And I will definitely post some of those really bad teeth photos from some of the uh, grooming dogs that I have seen over the years. So thank you everyone for listening. Be sure to give us a like, a follow, share the show with ev everyone you know, please. <laughs> and Give us a rating and review. It helps so much with uh, actually bringing the show in front of more people so that we're easier to find. And plus, it'll just, it'll make my, my, my heart sing, you know, la. <laughs> so thank you everyone for listening. This is All for Animals, and I will see you next time. <laughs>